Hello everyone, my name is Evo and welcome to Cooking with the Koyas. Today folks, we are going to make my version of one of the Southern Italian classic soups, fava bean soup. Yes folks, fava beans are packed, loaded with vitamins and antioxidants. They are so good for you. If you've never had fava beans folks, you're really missing out because they are loaded with health benefits. And today, folks, we are going to make a not only healthy soup, but absolutely delicious. Of course, anything that stems from Southern Italy is absolutely delicious. But as I said, this is my version of it, uh, and I think you're going to like it. Okay, so fava beans. I've got here a package of frozen fava beans. You could use, of course, fresh. They're harder to find. Typically, you can find them in, the, um, in your local grocery store, in the freezer section, or um, you can get them in cans as well. So either way, they're readily available. If you buy the hard ones, you're going to have to, of course, soak them overnight and get them ready for the next day. I just prefer buying the frozen ones. They're easy, they're convenient, and again, they're super healthy. So I have here 750 grams or 26 ounces. Of, of fava beans. That's going to be the base for our soup. Simple, more simple, healthy ingredients. Garlic. So I have here one garlic clove. You want to chop it up, slice it, and dice it. Okay, because this is going to be also part of our soup. Chop it up. The finer the better. Okay. One clove of garlic, minced. Next on the list, I have here one, I'm going to say medium sized onion, sweet onion. Same thing, folks. Just begin. Try to slice it thin. I mean, it's not really, really important because at the end of the day, it's going to be all uh, blended into a soup. But when you get to a point where you're getting a little uncomfortable holding, just flip it over on, the, on the, its other flat side and continue to slice. Okay, same thing. All right. Onion, garlic. And what we have here now, folks, is potato. So for the ratio, basically you want half of the amount of potato to fava beans. So we have 750 grams, half is about 375 grams uh, or 13 ounces of potato. Thereabouts, a little more, a little less isn't gonna hurt, but thereabouts is what you want in potato. And quite simply for the potato, just cube it. Okay, small cubes. Again, it's all going to be blended, but uh, the reason we want them just, you know, s small cubes is so that they cook up a little bit quicker and a little bit easier. That, that's all. So, I'm using a yellow fleshed potato. Uh, I prefer yellow fleshed or red fleshed or just simply your classic white. But I, uh, I stay away from russet. For this recipe. Okay. Folks, that's it for our prep right there. Let's make our way over to the stove. So, in a nice sized pot, we are going to add some extra virgin olive oil. One, two, three, four, five, six tablespoons, folks, of the good stuff. <laughs> okay. Let's fire up our oven. And we are going to add all those ingredients we just prepped. Okay. The garlic and the onion actually go in first. Okay. So we're going to add the garlic and the onion first.
And basically, all we want to do is just soften this up a bit. So we're gonna we're gonna saute this just for oh three to five minutes, just to get them cooked up a bit, and then go from there. So our onion and garlic are sauteing up really nicely in that beautiful extra virgin olive oil. Again, another super healthy ingredient. And you might have thought, oh, he put in an awful lot of extra virgin olive oil. Not really, folks. And it's going to end up in your soup, again, which is very, very healthy. Okay, so now that about five minutes have passed, we're going to add our potatoes. In they go. And we're going to add our fava beans. Now what I did, folks, is I took the fava beans and I just gave them a good rinse under some uh, cool water. Okay. Um, but otherwise, they go straight in. And that's what they look like. They're a broad bean, green broad bean. In fact, the fava bean, especially the fresh ones, were one of my father's absolute favorites. He would sit there. He would actually buy a bushel of fresh fava beans and little by little he'd eat that whole bushel not all in one day but <laughs> that's how much he really liked them okay so what you want to do now is just toss to coat i'm going to put the heat back up to high i had it on medium but now that i've added everything's cooled down so i'm going to bring it back to high again and what you want to do is coat the potato and the fava beans with all that beautiful onion and garlic and extra olive, extra virgin olive oil. Okay, so toss the coat, and once this comes to temperature, I'll drop it back down to medium, and we're just gonna let this kind of saute for another five minutes. Okay, I can see we already started, so I'm gonna drop it right now down to medium. About medium there, and we'll give it another, we'll give it another five minutes. That's looking good. Just softened up a little bit, that's all. So now at this point, we can add our broth. Vegetarians, of course, use vegetable broth 100% no problem. You have the option, however, to use chicken broth if you prefer. So I personally like the chicken broth flavor in this soup, so I'm going to add the chicken broth. But by all means, vegetable broth is amazing in this recipe, okay? So please use either vegetable or chicken broth as need be. Now, I normally have my own broth that I make. At this time, I've ran out of mine and I had to succumb to the store and go buy my, my broth, but that's okay too, okay? So now, how much broth do you add? Here's the thing, folks. It depends on how thick you want it. So the answer is easy, you want at least a minimum of two liters uh, of broth, which is two quarts, okay? Up to, you want, if you want a bit of a thinner uh, soup, a little bit thinner, then you can go, you know, two and a half liters or two and a half quarts uh, of broth. So because I'm using store-bought broth, these three packages happens to work out to just a little bit more than two and a half liters. And that's fine too. So basically, the short answer is two to two and a half liters or two to two and a half quarts thereabouts. And if you use the lesser amount, you're gonna have a thicker, heavier soup. And nothing wrong with that either. So it all depends on personal preference. Okay, so for this now, I've got the heat back up to high. We need to bring this to a boil. So all we do now is bring it to a boil. And once it comes to a boil, we want it to boil for at least 20 minutes, up to 30 minutes, okay? But 20 minutes minimum. I like to let it go the full 30. So we're gonna put the lid on, bring it to a boil, and let it boil for up to 30 minutes. Meanwhile, while this is cooking and boiling, we're gonna prepare our other healthy ingredient. Yes, multitasking folks, while that's doing its thing, we're gonna do our thing. We're not gonna waste any time at all. Okay, so the next ingredient that we're going to add, this is, this is a beautiful head of escarole, okay? Um, you could either use escarole or endive. Those are your two bread and butter 
let's say, not so bitter additions that we're going to add to our soup. Uh, in southern Italy, they like to add chicoria. Chicoria is chicory or dandelion. And if you see that in the grocery store and you want to try that, by all means, please do. It'll be a little more bitter, but that just enhances the soup in a different way. That's all. This will be sweet. So we're going to take a half a head of the escarole. And I like to take, let's say, the top half because the bottom half is typically whiter and nicer for salads. So we're going to take a half a head of escarole. Let me just give it a quick wash. Okay. I'm also going to spin it dry because this is going to end up in a frying pan and we definitely don't want to add anything wet to our oil. Okay, actually let's check our soup. No boil yet. Getting close though, getting close folks. All right, let's take our escarole. And basically what we want to do is chop it up. Quite simply, just chop it up. So I'm going to dry this out because we're going to put our escarole back into this container. So basically all we want to do here is just roughly chop up our escarole. So I'll do a little at a time here. Just take a bunch, group it together, and then quite simply, just chop it. Okay, there we go. Huh? Nice. Okay, let's chop up the rest here. And finally, our last little bit. All right, I'll get this chopped up as well. Okay, there we have it. Now, how's our soup doing? Ooh, timer started, it's boiling. So we're gonna let it go. It's probably been boiling for a couple minutes, so we'll let it go a good 25 minutes. So let's check out our boil. Yep, we got a good vigorous boil going on there, folks. Okay, great. Okay, so again, in not wasting any time, we are going to lightly saute that beautiful endive that we just cut up. So once again, extra virgin olive oil. One, two, three, four, five. Five tablespoons extra virgin olive oil. Fire up the stove to at least medium. And let's get our escarole. We're gonna put it in right now. This is gonna cook down in size a bit too, folks, so don't worry about that. There we go. And again, I spun it dry, so it's, it's relatively dry, which is nice for us to saute. Okay, let's bring that up to temp. And in fact, we can give this a stir. Oh yeah, it's cooking up nicely, folks. That's what you wanna see right there. Beautiful. Okay, things are starting to heat up nicely. So again, take that escarole and get it covered up with that beautiful extra virgin olive oil. Now, a couple things. You notice the lid is still on. While your soup is boiling, you wanna keep the lid on because you don't wanna lose uh, any broth. You wanna contain all that broth. You don't want it to evaporate. And the secondly, I mentioned I'm using store-bought broth today. Well, the, boff, the broth that I bought contains salt. So I haven't added any salt to anything yet because what I want to do is when I get towards the end, I'm going to, I'm going to taste it 
and then I will decide if I need to add more salt or not. So uh, again, depending on your situation, if you didn't have any salt at all, I would have added some salt and I would add some salt right here right now as well. But like I said, I'm holding off and I will do that later because I used very salty broth from the store. That's looking good. I'm gonna saute this down. I want it to be nice and soft because it's gonna go into our, uh, into our soup. Now I also noticed that when I cut these up, I could have cut them even smaller. So what I'm gonna do, folks, with a pair of scissors, I'm just gonna cut them up into smaller pieces. Okay, again, because this is gonna go into our soup and I don't necessarily want a big piece of, uh, of endive to deal with. So I'm gonna chop it up a little more. I could have avoided this by just chopping it finer right from the beginning. But oh well, that's okay. Okay, you know what folks, the endive I'm gonna say has sauteed up very nicely. It's softened up and it's, as you can see, it's cooked right down. So this is done. This can now rest and wait for our soup to finish cooking. Okay, our boil time is now up folks. Okay, this has been cooking away for about 30 minutes. And all we want to do here is make everything soft because, folks, in comes the immersion blender. Take your time and make sure everything gets blended in until it's nice and creamy. Okay, that should about do it, folks. All right, let's see. Now, the consistency of the soup. You remember there we added a little extra um, we add a little extra broth so it's thinner. If we would have went with two liters instead, this would be much thicker. So again, as I said earlier, depends on your particular taste. And speaking of taste, I got a taste for salt. Let's just get a little sample here. Mmm, oh boy. You know what? I think that's salty enough for me. Again, you be the judge, but oh, that's really good, folks. Okay, so at this point, um, because I'm happy with that salt there, we still have to add our added greens. So I will give these a little touch of salt, just so I know I'm adding at least this that it's not going to water down my salted soup. Ooh, is that, that little taste test, folks? Ooh, is it ever good? And this, again, is more healthiness going into our soup, folks. Leave it to Italy, eh? Leave it to Italy to make a green soup and add more greens. <laughs> uh, mind you, this is my version, as I mentioned, but I do really, really enjoy chicoria. I like that bitterness taste. I never used to as a child, but as I've gotten older, I've really acquired a taste of it. Look at that soup, folks. Oh my goodness, you know what's, in the, you know what's waiting for me is the taste test. Yes, look at this, I'm diving in. Yes, that little taste that I did has got me excited about having this soup, folks, because it was that good. Oh, look at this. Folks, look at that beautiful bowl of soup right there. And I tell you, um, this does not need, I mean, you could add your own extra salt if you want, black pepper to it. Uh, one thing I do like to add every so often is a little bit of Tabasco sauce. But today, folks, for the taste test, we're gonna leave it right the way it is. And I'm looking forward to that. Let's get into this right now. And yes, of course, folks, I added an extra scoop of 
soup to my bowl because it was only half full. That wouldn't be any good. Folks, the taste test. Look at this beautiful fava bean soup right there, folks. Ooh, it's piping hot. Mmm, oh my goodness. With that added escarole in there, talk about the icing on the cake. I'll try not to slurp. Mmm, oh my goodness, folks. Absolutely delicious. Fava bean soup, so healthy and yet so delicious. I'm not adding anything to this. No hot, no Tabasco sauce, nothing. This is stunningly delicious. And the fact that it's not overly thick for me, that's fine too. I actually prefer mine, let's say soupier uh, than thicker, but of course, like I say, if you like it thicker, that's no problem either. But to me, this is thick enough. And let me tell you folks, it is loaded, loaded with flavor. Hmm. And so easy to make. Prep to the stove, boil for a half hour, add your escarole, blend it together, you're done. Seriously, folks, you have to give this recipe a try. I mean, and like I say, Southern Italy, they'll be happy. If you're tuning in from Puglia, give my version a try. See what you think of it. Hmm. But wherever you're tuning in from, folks, as always, I want to thank you for spending time in the kitchen with me, and I really hope you give this recipe a try. That's what would make me very happy. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, buon appetito. This will not be my only bowl that I'm having. <laughs>